if you had to pinpoint a couple of words and say this is this is what I really was impacted with, it's his his patience, because Jackie was uh, read to be a militant makeup, a hothead, and the guys in the Negro League who saw he was being a candidate, predicted he wouldn't make it because of his temper. But when Mr. Ricky talked to Jackie and he said, "Look." You can whip anybody on the field. You're strong as anybody. My question you must answer is, are you strong enough not to fight? Now, when that charge was given to Jackie, he must have had his life pass in front of his eyes. And he said, yes, I want to fight. <laughs> I was a kid in Cairo, Georgia, a sharecropper's kid. I ended up going to uh, the West Coast. Uh, and enrolled in UCLA, got a lot. In the Army, he was treated uh, as a segregated, even though he was captain. He must have seen all that, but he saw that he was a smart guy. He saw that his charge was bigger than winning ball games. And he finally said to Mr. Ricky, I can do it. Well, there's no history anywhere written or spoken about Jackie ever hitting, pushing, spitting on somebody, <laughs> pushing him in a parking lot, a restaurant. Uh, on the field. It didn't happen. So his amazing self-control, and Mr. Ricky was so wise, he said, I can't have a passive personality in this role. He's got to be a fighter, but he's got to be able to control it. So he gave Jackie the speech, and he read the scripture, turned the other cheek, and said, this is how you whip segregation, or the bully, as he used to call segregation. Uh, if you don't run, you don't fight, you stand in a passive response, say, hit me again, <laughs> uh, the bully's done. And, and Mr. Ricky was right. That's how Jackie treated his uh, treatment. He was uh, put on pretty heavy from the dugouts. And he couldn't stay in hotels with us. There was a lot of indignities. Uh, Jackie contained all that. And so to me, uh, a lesser person could not have. I'm not sure I could have kept. I'm not a fighter, but. <laughs> But I don't know with some of the uh, verbiage that came out of the other dugout, some of the treatment that uh, Jackie got uh, as a black man in America in the 1940s. Uh, I'm not sure I could have done it, but Jackie did do that. Well, first of all, he's a human being. Jackie now is a piece of history, and he, he can make him larger than life. You can imagine he was a superhuman being. Uh, the fact is, he was a very ordinary human being in terms of uh, how he was raised by a good, strong Christian mother, and uh, he had to fight. He bled just like anybody when he got cut. He was a human being. I want people to, to realize that Jackie was denied all the rights of a full American citizenship, and he, he testified before Congress. He wasn't mad at the Ku Klux Klan. He wasn't mad at the bigots. He said the Constitution clearly says we're all equal Americans. We want to be treated equally. And there used to be a funny uh, way of saying that. Uh, we used to say, or the population, the culture used to say, uh, equal but separate. And, and that was such a twist. And Jackie says that's what I'm against. Uh, we're not separate but equal. We are equal. And uh, I just think when you come out of the theater, you're going to have a feeling that the proportions were so overwhelming that did, could he really do that? This is a document that says he did do it and we're all better for it.